Star Wars Battlefront 2 is now easier for you to play than ever. Alongside a selection of other EA games, Battlefront 2 was just made available on Steam, which is great news since we all know more people use Steam, so more people will probably play Battlefront 2. Steam is easily the most popular video game desktop client, with the largest library of downloadable games in the world. So do you think this means EA are moving away from releasing PC titles exclusively through Origin? And how is this going to affect the online PC player base of Battlefront 2? I personally think it's really positive news for the game, as more people are going to see it on sale and buy it. And guys, I want to ask you about the next generation of consoles. The PS5 just got unveiled earlier today, and I'm assuming EA's upcoming Project Maverick will be releasing for next gen as well, along with Jedi Fallen Order 2, and potentially also LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. But what else do you think we can expect for next gen? And Star Wars gaming. Hey everyone, it's Andrew. <laughs> so in addition to Battlefront 2, which is the celebration edition and comes with nearly all cosmetic items in the game, EA also just released a huge variety of their other AAA titles on Steam. And lots of them are currently on sale, some up to 50, 75% off. So I'd recommend getting on them while they're cheap. And they're games you'd recognize, ones you've probably either seen or played before. I know you've played this one, 2015 Star Wars Battlefront. And it's the Ultimate Edition, meaning it comes with all four DLC expansions, The Outer Rim, Bespin, Death Star, and Rogue One. Basically, the final finished version of Star Wars Battlefront with all content. It's pretty amazing, right? And right now, it's 50% off. You can buy it for about 15 Australian dollars, which is about 10 US dollars. It's super cheap. Definitely going to be getting this one later today, once I finish my video. <laughs> if you're a fan of the Battlefield franchise, every Battlefield game released in the last decade is now available on Steam. Battlefield 3, Battlefield Hardline, and Battlefield Bad Company 2 are currently 75% off. Incredibly cheap for these games. I still remember when Battlefield 3 first released and I got it from the store, how much of a game changer it was in first person shooters. Do you guys remember the sound design in this game? I feel like it set the industry standard for what the future of video games should sound like. I remember putting on a headset for the first time and just being amazed by the layering of sound and the world destruction and the way you understood distance in the game and how it just all felt so real. And also Battlefield 4, Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5 are also all on sale, currently 50% off. So along with the Battlefronts and Battlefields, Mass Effect 3 and Mass Effect Andromeda are now both on Steam as well, currently half price. We also have the Command & Conquer Remastered Collection, Need for Speed, Need for Speed Heat and Need for Speed Rivals, the Dragon Age series of games, Crisis 3, both Mirror's Edge games, Plants vs Zombies Battle for Neighborville, all of these games are now also on Steam and are all on sale, along with a bunch of older EA games. If you're like me, you're probably going to be investing a lot more time into gaming now that so many of these games are so cheap and easy to download. I feel like I'm just about to buy 10 games. And Jedi Fallen Order. If you haven't played it yet, it's currently 50% off, so good time to buy. And Fallen Order was actually one of the first EA games in recent times to launch across multiple clients, releasing not only on Origin, but also on the Epic Games Store and Steam a few months ago when the game first came out. And for the longest time now, Steam has already hosted a wide variety of Star Wars games. Lots of the old LucasArts titles have been on Steam for years. And they go on sale pretty frequently. There was a sale for May the 4th, which bundled all these Star Wars games together and you could purchase over a dozen games for about $100. Not so bad for the amount of content you're getting. It included games like Knights of the Old Republic, the original Star Wars Battlefronts, Star Wars Racer, The Force Unleashed, Republic Commando, and lots more. Lots of those classic games. So now that all these EA games are also available on Steam, I wouldn't be surprised if every now and then, especially for Star Wars events, that they all get bundled in with some of these other Star Wars games and you can just buy them all at once for a cheaper price. I'm just speculating here, but it would definitely be worth it for the amount of games you're getting. And do you feel like all these games being on Steam and in the one place just makes online gaming so much easier. EA's Origin has always had its criticisms. I've personally always found Steam easier to use and if EA continues releasing their new titles for Steam, which seems likely at the moment, you won't have to go swapping between different clients. And also coming to Steam soon is EA Access, which is EA's subscription service. For about $5 a month, this gives you early trials of games, a 10% discount on EA titles and 
free access to a selection of games chosen by EA. I'll leave it up to you to decide if this service is worth it. Not sure how many of you actually use this and are subscribed, but I personally prefer just buying the games themselves. So what do you think of the PS5, huh? <laughs> Not really what I was expecting in terms of the way it looks. The memes have already started strong with this one. Looks kind of like the cheap router you get from your internet provider. Cheap and plastic looking, right? To me, this really doesn't look like the future of gaming and there's two separate editions, the standard PS5 and the digital edition, which is supposedly the same as the standard edition, except without the disk drive. This is like Apple removing the AUX jack from the iPhone a few years ago. Pretty bold move, but I'm not sure why you'd buy the one without the disk drive unless you never buy physical discs and never need to use a Blu-ray player. The price of the PS5 hasn't been revealed just yet. That's coming later this year, but I'm assuming the digital edition will be cheaper, right? That's how they'll try to get people to buy it. I'm not sure how I feel about the PS5 yet. Looks wise, I definitely prefer the Xbox Series X, sleeker, more minimalist design. Even though I've always been a PlayStation guy, I've had PS2, PS3, PS4, and now potentially PS5. I mean, I'll definitely end up getting one of these new consoles and it's probably gonna be the PlayStation just because that's the one my friends will get. But what do you guys think of these? Which one do you think looks better? And how do you think these future consoles are gonna support next gen Star Wars gaming? There's currently two EA Star Wars games in development. There's Project Maverick, which based on some recent Twitter activity from the developer, I'm hoping we'll be hearing more about in the next few weeks. And then Jedi Fallen Order 2 or Fallen Order sequel is also in development. That one's not due until either 2021 or 2022, so it's pretty much guaranteed it's gonna be a next gen title. But hopefully these will also release on the current gen to not leave players left out. And Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga had the leaked release date of October 20 this year, which is before the rumored release of these next consoles, which will probably release in November. So at launch, this game will be a current gen title along with PC and Nintendo Switch, but it's likely it's gonna be the biggest Lego game of all time. So it's definitely gonna be extremely popular. So you'd have to think it'll also launch on PS5 and Xbox Series X at a later date. So I wanted to ask you guys, do you think both of EA's Battlefront 1 and 2 releasing on Steam will create somewhat of a resurgence for the Battlefront series and will increase the player base? So many people are going to see this huge EA sale on Steam right now and see that all these EA games have dropped onto Steam. And with how cheap the games are right now, you'd have to think lots of people are going to be enticed into buying them, even if they were the ones hating on Battlefront 2 when it first launched. I mean, if it's cheap, people will buy anything. If there's one thing everyone in the gaming community knows, it's that Battlefront 2 made a comeback. The Clone Wars changed everything and the support and updates implemented into the game by the developers gave Battlefront 2 a new image and I think that's positively reflected here with it being on Steam. When all of Battlefront 2's updates were releasing, especially the Clone Wars stuff, so many players jumped back online to play. I know lots of people reinstalled the game or even went out and bought it after boycotting sales at launch. I think the game being so cheap on Steam right now is going to introduce a new wave of players and will continue keeping this game alive. And remember, this is the full Battlefront 2 new players would be getting. It's the Celebration Edition, meaning it comes with almost every skin and cosmetic item unlocked in the game. Not to mention every update Battlefront 2 has ever received, from the Clone Wars maps to Original Trilogy to Age of Resistance. It's everything, except some of the appearances the game received after December 20. 2019. This was when the Rise of Skywalker content dropped, so any cosmetic items after this still need to be unlocked. But man, regardless of that, this is a lot of content. And now that Battlefront 1 is on Steam as well, I'm really excited to go back and play this. I feel like this game might also have a slight resurgence. Not sure how many people are still playing this on PC. I jump on my PS4 version from time to time and can still join games during peak times. Just might have to wait a few minutes, but for you PC players, is this also the case? So people still playing this nowadays. And one thing that I found disappointing about this game is the way it's broken up into the different DLCs. I think it kind of divided the player base too much and finding a match on say the Death Star rotation might be tricky. So you might just have to stick to the main game modes, but maybe I'll try hold a few Battlefront 1 events through my Discord in the future where we can all jump online and play the old game and reminisce. I know I said this a while back and it never really happened with PS4. I got busy with some other stuff, but we did have the Rogue One Scarif event organized by
by the Star Wars Battlefront subreddit. So if you join my Discord, you'll hear if any of these other events get organized. No promises though, it's been a busy few months. So are you thinking you're gonna go off and buy some of these Star Wars games now that they're on Steam? Let me know in the comments. I'll leave links to where you can find these games on Steam in the description. And if you wanna learn more about EA's Project Maverick, the upcoming Star Wars game from Motive Studios, go watch this video here and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and join my Discord for more on the future of Star Wars gaming and PS5 memes. <laughs> and thanks for watching this. My name's Andrew. I'll catch you soon. <laughs> Stay bombastic.